Vice President Dr. Mamadou Bahamia has revealed that government is expecting the introduction of the digital currency, the ECD, to address attacks on bullion vans. According to him, the ECD, when implemented, will drastically reduce cash transactions and bring transparency to all transactions in the country. Delivering a public lecture on Ghana's digital economy at Ashesi University on Tuesday, Dr. Bahamia said the ECD is simply the digital form of the fiscal CD in circulation. It is a legal tender issued and backed by the central bank. Hey. The payment system reforms we have put in place as a country has made it very easy to open a traditional bank account. For many banks now, in, anyone can open a bank account remotely through their mobile money, their mobi mobile phones, without even visiting the branch or filling out forms. Clients need only a valid national ID card and no documentation. You dial a USS code, put in your national ID card number, and pronto, a bank account is open for you. This is progress. As stated, in the informal sector, which is dominated by cash payments, most, money, most merchants are reluctant to accept other forms of payment for reasons of cost and convenience. To address these challenges, the Bank of Ghana and the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement Services recently rolled out a universal QR code that allows all merchants and service providers as well as individuals to receive payments instantly on their mobile phones. As customers can just scan the QR code or dial a USSD for those who have YAM phones. The universal QR code is very conducive for merchants because all they need is the mobile phone. They don't need a point of sale device and when payment is made, it comes into their Momo or their bank account instantly and they will receive an alert instantly. While QR code payments across the world, while QR code payments exist across the world, universal QR code systems, where the, all the banks, all the mobile companies, all the fintechs are on one platform with interoperability between mobile money accounts and bank accounts is a rare, rarity. We don't really have many of such examples. Ghana again is the first in Africa to implement such a universal QR code payment system. <laughs> to deepen the digitalization process, the Bank of Ghana has started the process to launch a central bank digital currency, the ECD, next year. The ECD is simply a digital form of the physical CD in circulation. It is legal tender issued and backed by the central bank. It is not a cryptocurrency. With the digital currency, citizens will hold currency in the form of a digital wallet. And when the ECD is fully adopted, and I am sure uh, with the governor and his team in place, uh, it will, they will work to have it fully adopted in the next few years. When it is fully adopted, ladies and gentlemen, the incidence of fake or counterfeit currencies and bullion van robberies will be a thing of the past. All right, let's speak with uh, Professor Lord Mensa. He's a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. Good morning to you, Prof, and thank you for making time to speak with us. Now, I, I, I would want to understand if you appreciate how this ECD will work and how different is it from you know, moving money from one bank account to another bank account electronically. Yeah, um, the ECD more or less, um, it's not a physical you know, coin and then the physical, you know, cash that we know. But then in the end, it's going to be a currency backed by the regulator. But then in the end, uh, it's going to be kind of a currency sitting on the internet, you know. And uh, it's a space that is quite, you know, protective. Uh, we need to understand, you know, the digitalization of economies uh, globally as we speak now. Um, now, the transformation of, you know, goods and services. 
uh, how they are consumed and how they exchange hands are mainly being digitized. And so uh, that is the global trend now. But I would say that it is just money sitting on the internet, um, basically. All right. Again, so the question is, how different is it from, you know, having funds in your bank account that you can transfer electronically to another bank account? Right. So, you see, for bank to bank, you're looking at uh, money in one account and then being moved to another account. In this case, it can be used for transactions even at a till. So, purposely, if you go to the shop and then the, uh, the shop is also hooked on to the internet system, you should be able to use that for a transaction. So, that is different. It's going to I mean, expand the scope of transactions. As you mentioned earlier, we can do bank to bank transaction now. But, you know, when you have money sitting or in your account, you ask yourself, what, what can you do with it? Unless maybe you go to the banking hall to cash in the money, or maybe you go to the mobile money, I mean, uh, out, outlet to cash the money, and then before you can do a transaction. But this time round, you can easily transfer, you know, whilst you are at the till or at the shop. All right, again, when you're looking at that, and then I'll say, well, I have my plastic, I have my uh, debit card or my credit card, and especially the debit card. With that, I can make payments at POS devices or any terminal at all that I accept it. Yes, I mean, it makes sense to look at it that way. But then in that case, you are not necessarily going to use a card. I mean, it's just a transaction in a space that does not hold any physical activity like a card or maybe swapping or maybe a digit or something it's just a transaction that is going to happen on the space of the internet what are the advantages that it has over the other forms of electronic payments or payment systems that we have right now well you this is more or less uh, looking at in aggregation what is going to happen in the transaction space um, and because it has been regulated, when you want to catch up the economy in real time, you can easily measure the quantum of transactions that are going on. Unlike the normal ones that we have, it has to go through several channels. The banks need to close their accounts at the end of the day and then possibly move you know, funds here and there across various banks before the central bank can capture some of these um, in details. But for this one, I think um, once it's been regulated and highly you know, tracked across, you know, various, um, you know, points. I think the, the, the Bank of Ghana should be able to track, you know, the various transactions that are going on. The advantage is going to be that it, 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 it will go a long way to help the economy track the possible transactions and possibly look at where you can fix taxes here and there. All right. So I probably should get some, a better understanding of how this operates, and I will do that. But let's look at the other things that the, pre the vice president said in his speech on digitalizing the economy. He talked about the e-card, the Ghana card, for instance, becoming acceptable in many airports across the world. 197 airports, he said, from February next year. Uh, what do you make of that as well, and how is that going to advance the digitalization that we're having? Yeah, I mean, if you have um, um, the, the Ghana card, um, the integration of the card to the platforms that we're going to digitize the economy is very, very important. We cannot look at this card sitting alone by themselves, but then how we can integrate this to the, to the, to the various platforms that we have so that when you, have a you do a transaction, we can easily identify who is behind that transaction. And for identification purposes, it should be able to help us. We shouldn't think that, you know, the digital space has no risk. I mean, when you talk about, you know, things like um, cyber crimes and all those, we're going to have that, you know, growing up. So we need to identify the people behind transactions. So um, the database that we have as far as our national identification card is concerned, we're going to prep up, you know, how we can digitize the economy. Now, one of the things that has come up is this uh, e-pharma initiative that the vice president is talking about. And there are those who are saying that the government is getting into an area that should have been left for the private sector. And that if government goes in there and is not able to follow it through, it gets to a point where government 
will back off. But at that point, you would have discouraged the private sector players that are already in that space. Is that a, a realistic assumption? Well, um, it is um, because um, those are more or less a policy-backed, you know, initiatives. And in the end, if government takes on something, we are aware of some of these things that we can sublet to the private sector. And so if the government takes it up and in the end um, it does not yield anything, effectively um, anybody that wants to go into that sector will be discouraged. And um, for me, I do, I do support that clearly. And so it's about time the government looks at the part of the digitization that they can seed off to the, you know, the, the private man, so that in the end it will not be like a wholly owned government initiative for the government to, um, I mean, go in there and possibly um, not being able to achieve what is um, required of this digitization. And one other thing that is also coming up is the issue of transparency in procurement when it comes to some of these initiatives that government is talking about. There are those who are saying that it would be good if government is very transparent about how it goes about the procurement so that we don't have, we don't end up paying too much for something that ideally should cost a whole lot less. Well, I have been looking at these initiatives and I always ask myself that, you know, how is it going to create a benefit for us? And like you said, if it turns out that the cost to it are so high, then it means that the benefit will be nothing to write about. In the end, we might have something going on, but then the impact as expected might not be felt. Um, all these things going forward, I presume that should build up into our revenue generation. And, and so, and you know, it's a digitization kind of economy. And we don't expect that it will take a longer time for us to feel the impact. And so, if at the end of the day we initiate all this and it turns out that our revenue is still not, you know, um, going up as expected, then I would say that, yes, indeed, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a project that um, is not yielding anything for us. So we should critically look at the cost. I mean, very, very important. It's something that government um, I mean, is going into. We all appreciate the fact that it will help the economy. But if it's coming at a higher cost, you know, where it is going to dwindle, you know, the benefits that we're expecting from it, I would say that, yes, um, it won't be something that we should look at. But then also with the procurement, it's a space that we don't have much, you know, kind of market. And so if you are to open up to, let's say, you're going to have three companies coming to bid for a particular part of the, you know, the whole transaction, uh, possibly you might not get it. But in the end, even if you are going for, you know, so um, kind of um, um, procurement uh, package, you should be able to negotiate and take the country at heart yeah. so that we can realize the benefits that will come with these initiatives. All right, thank you very much, uh, Professor Lord Mensah. It's a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School. We appreciate your time here on Newsday. Yeah.